Hey everyone, back with the second last video in this tutorial series on Maze Magician 4.0.0. So the, the next video is going to be about two-dimensional mazes and the differences between generating those versus three-dimensional mazes, although they're very similar, so everything you've been hearing about throughout these videos will still hold true. This video is going to be about the last few options for maze generation down here that we haven't touched on yet. Kind of a catch-all cleanup video. The first thing we haven't talked about is making a floor exit, but I'm going to save that to the end. <laughs> the next thing is making a braid maze. So basically a braid maze is a maze without any dead ends. In a traditional perfect maze, you can wander around with your hand on the right-hand wall or the left-hand wall, and eventually you will have reached every point in the maze. Um, when you end up in a dead end like this, you loop around and come back out the other side. Which makes it really easy uh, to find your way throughout a perfect maze. If you make a braid maze on the other hand, it deletes those dead ends. So you'll notice that there isn't a single dead end in this entire maze. All those uh, places that may have been dead ends, probably here, have had a wall broken down so that the player could theoretically, by trying to use that hand on the right hand wall trick, end up walking in a, in a circle forever, stuck in the same part of the maze. So it's kind of a sadistic move on, uh, on a developer's part, but maybe I play too much Dark Souls, but I kind of appreciate that. Braid mazes are actually my, my favorite way to generate mazes uh, with this tool, so take that as you will. Uh, the next thing here is the name of the maze, and this will just name the ba the game object in the in the inspector here in the hierarchy and every maze has this maze script when you generate a maze it checks every object with the maze script on it checks the names if this name is the same as a name in the scene this object gets deleted and the new one takes its place now if we change this name just a little bit we'll change it to example maze 2 generate a new maze and we have another one here um, pretty useful if you want to generate multiple mazes throughout the scene or generate them incrementally in the background by calling generate new maze incremental through scripting. If you, if you do that, you'll want to be changing this variable and adding, so you can add multiple mazes throughout the scene as they're generated. The allow undo in editor checkbox does exactly what it says. When I generate a maze, I cannot hit Control Z to go back. I can only press forward. The reason this isn't enabled by default like it is on all of my other packages is because it takes up a lot of RAM. Each of these mazes has to be held in memory basically for the duration of your Unity session. So to clear out that uh, massive RAM usage, you're going to have to shut down Unity and restart it. So I don't necessarily recommend using it all the time, but if you do end up using it, it is pretty handy to be able to generate a new maze and then step backwards a couple. Uh, but again, just watch that, uh, watch that RAM usage. Saving and loading is completely different in this version. I don't save the same level of information that I used to because it just wasn't maintainable. It was taking up something like a third of my code base, and that was only going to grow to probably one half with the plaza generation because there's just so much to track. If you're tracking the exact coordinates of every object and creating an ID system for every object so you can pull objects up based on ID, it just wasn't wasn't feasible to maintain it, especially since I have custom seed values now, which basically do this exact same thing, just with one integer. <laughs> but if I want to save, I can save generator settings now. I'll just replace that file. And if I change a bunch of stuff, you know, I want to make the maze smaller and move it over. Change all these. Uh, we can check off a couple of these boxes. And I could save another another setup, and then I could pass this over to a coworker via a flash drive so they can grab the same settings I have, maybe the seed value that I've saved here. And then you just load one of these files up and you're back to those settings that you saved so it's kind of a handy tool to have once in a while just 
so that you don't have to make you know 50 different maze generator prefabs you can have these files that you save and load for the the lightweight settings things that they don't save are things like these wall pieces it doesn't touch this at all so you can you still have to coordinate that and make sure that uh, you're saving these yourself or keeping note of what uh, what they are because right now there's uh, no way that I know of anyway in order to grab a prefab and turn it into data to drop in a text file somewhere or a binary file somewhere that can later be pulled out to uh, to fill all this back in. So there are some limitations to this system. I'll see how much use people get out of it. I'm looking for some feedback on this as well as the plaza generation. So again, you know, feel free to shoot me some uh, some questions or some comments through the uh, through the comment form on my on my website, and I'd be really interested in hearing whether or not you use the feature or think it will be useful. Because if there's really not a need for it, I'll just remove the buttons, clean up the inspector, and be able to delete some of the code base to clean that up too. Because cleaner, more efficient code, I think, is always uh, always better. The last thing I'm going to show you is. Making floor exits. Floor exits are pretty straightforward. There's another video out there on YouTube that uh, that covers them in specific. And really this hasn't changed at all. If you're making a floor exit, you pick a random spot anywhere in the maze. Except now it will not place the floor exit in the middle of a plaza. Since the plazas are supposed to be predefined by you with your perfect setup of flower beds and fountains and benches or shops or whatever the whatever the heck you have uh, it will not place a floor exit in an area that has a plaza but other than that it'll place it randomly somewhere in the maze the center is in the center third of the maze outside is the lock to the outside third of the maze I'm just gonna make it random for now let's make this a little bit smaller so that I can uh, I can track it down <laughs> after we generate it exit pieces are just the like floor pieces they're the list of, uh, of prefabs that we can place. So I've created this one exit cube, but you could make you know a number of exits. That each maze you generate has a different kind of exit, different colors of portals or different rewards on that exit tile. And really quickly, I'll show you what, show you what I've set up here. Basically, I've set up a floor tile a floor piece it's exactly the same dimensions as any of these other floor pieces down here and then I've just put this obelisk on it and that's where an exit tile is going to be placed you'll notice that the pivot point is in the same spot it would be on any floor tile and then the custom stuff I've just tacked on on top in this case is children but you could have modeled this all as one piece and then maybe you interact with the spire and teleport away so when I generate my maze It'll select something randomly from this array. I happen to have one object here, so I know exactly what I'm instantiating. And let's take an aerial view here to try to find this exit. Ah, there it is. And, whoops, that's what we have here. Um, it's replaced this particular floor tile, and it's lined up perfectly with everything else. So your exit tile is always gonna gonna be something like that another thing you can do you can actually add uh, if I just want to have blank options now there's a one in three chance I'll generate that exit cube but there's a two in three chance that I'm actually just gonna generate empty uh, empty space so I got the cube there uh, did I get the cube don't see it. Oh, there it is. Uh, I got the empty space. So you can leave, unlike most of the other things in the generator, you can leave these slots null, and you'll just have like a little, a little hole in the floor that you can, uh, you can drop out of, which I've actually used for some of my projects, where you just drop out of the maze, drop out of one, and fall into, into another. So very straightforward. That's the remainder of the features here. The next video is going to be about two-dimensional generation, and it's going to look awfully similar. But I, uh, I hope you're having a very informative time watching these videos.